the real disappointment of this issue is that he still hasn't worn this dopey little bowling ball helmet. Issue 2 of the Holy Roller is finally here, and honestly, I like it a lot. In the first issue, there was a lot of setup, but once we got all that out of the way, Issue 2 has lots of room for the characters to breathe and the emotions and the tone of the story to really come through strong. And there's really not that much that happens in this issue. He's hiding in his dad's house, his childhood friend shows up, and then he has a big fight with a bunch of Nazis. But because there's so little happening in the issue, we can really take our time and enjoy all the moments throughout. The scripting has also toned itself down since the first issue. I think there's a lot less pressure to set up the series as a Samberg series, so there's fewer one-liners, which makes the story feel more authentic. But there's still plenty of lines in the issue that are really funny. For example, when he throws a bowling ball into this guy's face and says, spare me your attitude, I know that that looks kind of like typical slapstick humor, but honestly, that really got me. There's just something classic about throwing a very heavy object at somebody's face. I know that it's really common in action movies and TV shows and everything else for people to have these insane fist fights where they're just smacking each other with bricks and toasters and any hard object they can find and it's basically cartoon physics where none of it manages to kill anybody. But when you stop and think about how much it would hurt to have a bowling ball thrown directly into your face and then you consider that he's also making a joke while he does it, I don't know, it just gets me. And this setup they do where the Nazis are breaking into the house and the main character has set up the soundtrack for Yentl for them to hear on their way in. Genius. Pure comedy gold. But the comic isn't just funny, it's also taken itself very seriously. And like I said before, now that it has time to breathe, those serious moments are really hitting. These Nazi characters are a little cartoonish at times, mostly just based on their costumes that they have. But they're also very believable. You could believe that American citizens could do something like this if they were motivated. And this page in particular really stood out to me because the main character talks about how he normally doesn't want to talk about his heritage. He's not interested in it at all, and he doesn't care when his dad talks about it, but because he's being persecuted by this Nazi guy, now he cares. He says, you're making me care. And I don't know how heavy the writers intended that moment to be, but it sure came off as heavy to me. That seems like a very important reflection of how people think about their identity. And I'm sure that you could read into the layers on that, the implications of human nature, but I feel like maybe I'm not the most capable person to explore that idea on this channel, so I'll just hope that the writers expand on that idea later in the series. There are a couple lines at the very end of the issue that I really like, the first of which is, All units, the bowler is back. Bring the big guns. And I just think that's a hilarious line that you can't find anywhere else, because where else are they going to say the bowler is back? And then the very last line in the issue is, target is wanted dead or, well, just dead. Which is such a dramatic and yet pithy thing to say, especially at the end of an issue, because the stakes are being made very clear, but it's also kind of a joke. That line in particular is very representative of the overall tone of this issue. Serious, and there are stakes here, but it's also really fun. I am so curious who is contributing which lines to this story, or just how the writing process works. I would love to be in the room with these three dudes as they write this comic, because I want to know which lines came from Andy, and which lines are Remender toning down Andy. Or maybe there were a few lines where Joe Roman wouldn't stop throwing golf balls at the other guys until they put them in the comic. I don't know. I want to know these things. So as far as the writing goes, it's only getting better in this series since issue one. The art is still not my favorite style. I do tend to like more detailed art, but I flipped through the issue a couple extra times just to give myself more time to sit with the art and appreciate it. And the closer I look, the more I like it. The more I look at this issue, the more it grows on me. Especially when you look at the detail of the coloring. I think Marino Denisio is how you pronounce his name. He's got this very modern feel to his coloring. It's definitely bright, but it's not so bright that it's too glossy or fake looking. It's also very textured. I'm looking in particular at his shorts here, which have this cool texture on them, and also the way that he's outlining characters based on where the light is. It almost makes everything feel like it's neon, like it's glowing with energy. And you know, the more I look through it, the more I appreciate the visual language that they're establishing here. Especially when you're looking at pages like this one, or this one, or this one, or even this one, which I like a lot because the artist put in this garden gnome that just got run over by the big truck is just look at that i don't know if it was in the script or not but somehow this nazi ran over a garden gnome and that is a great way of showing us who the villains are i love that kind of tiny detail 
So, like I said, not my go-to favorite kind of art, but it is really growing on me. And of course, all the emotions are clear, the body language is strong. It's not like Roland Bashi was ever a bad artist. I never thought he was bad. It's just not my preferred style, but it's growing on me. So overall, this series is still surprising me. I honestly thought the series was going to be a little over the top, but I'm really enjoying it. They're taking their time telling the story now, and it's a lot of fun. So I'm going to rate issue 2 of Holy Roller a 9 out of 10. I think the only reason it can be a 9 out of 10 is because all the heavy lifting of exposition got done in issue 1. But still, this individual issue, 9 out of 10. This was the only copy of this issue that my local comic store had because they don't expect people to buy it. But it's really good. So really, go out there and buy it. Go out and ask your local comic stores to order more copies for you. Let's get it into second printing. Because I'd really like to collect the rest of the series, and if it's not in stores, then I can't collect it. Did you read it? What do you think?